Good afternoon, everybody. It looks like we've got around 80% of the registrants to end. Um, so we're going to begin Cyclu's millimeter wave point to multi point webinar, introducing the new multi hall. Uh, what we're calling here internally the game changer uh, for the first time really today, being able to deliver cost effective connectivity uh, in a totally unique way in multi point. Uh, first time ever really in 60 gigahertz. Joining us and to handle the presentation is Director of Product Management at Cyclu Shimon Ochimbaum. Shimon's going to take us through uh, a number of applications as we'll move to uh, the general information across the, the product sets and we'll have a look at the agenda shortly. We wanted to introduce a, a poll. Um, the poll should be coming up on your screen just now. It was just an idea for us to get a bit of an idea about those of the audience and what typical typical application types they're using, whether they're deploying wireless links today, uh, if it is in 60 gig, 70 gigahertz, primarily in sub six gigahertz bands, so perhaps with traditional technologies in five gigahertz, 5.4, or of course, uh, alternative frequencies as well. So uh, this should be coming up on your screen now. If you've got uh, a chance to, to answer those questions, it would uh, greatly help us understand uh, slightly better the audience we're working with here today. So we've got a, a few of the answers coming in now as well. Now today's agenda, oh, we've got the results here, as you'll see. Um, so primarily uh, a large portion here, you know, more than 50% using uh, sub six gigahertz. But interestingly, we see already today a high use case in 60 gig. I think if we look at the market, particularly as a result of potential interference and also capacity demands, uh, people are moving to the higher frequencies to avoid those potential problematic situations. So uh, we have 73% uh, of the people here today already working inside 60 gig in point to point. Uh, another 40% are using the, the E-band part of the spectrum in 70 and 80 gigahertz in point to point. It seems very relevant um, considering the, the breakdown here that uh, having the ability to use 60 gigahertz point to multi point um, will really perhaps provide those advantages not yet seen today in sub six gigahertz. Uh, and for those that are operating in other frequencies as well, perhaps 60 gig point to multi point will build a business case for you to be able to utilize this technology. Uh, to the agenda, Shimon. So today's agenda includes the target applications for point to multi point products in 60 gigahertz. A look at the product cycle. So we have a look at uh, the base station in depth, the subscribe unit options, how a typical bill of materials and deployment will look. We're going to be introducing an evaluation partner offer. Uh, we'll more on that later on, but we're essentially looking for 20 partners to trial the product here in the UK following successful global deployments in places like the US, Germany and Russia. And we'll conclude with a question and answer session as well. When we look at broadband use in the UK, uh, when surveyed by Deloitte or the National Office of Statistics has that people between the age of 16 and 44 have used the internet, 99% of those people have used the internet in the last three months. When we look at the age group of 44 to 54, 96.8% of people have used the internet within the last three months. With services like Netflix, Amazon Prime, YouTube, um, you know, high capacity streaming, whether it's um, the way content's being delivered to us. I think a prime example of this is you take um, the independent newspaper, a newspaper that once sold over 400,000 copies a day has now shifted its entire content delivery to online only. So I think we're seeing a way that people, you know, really want to be connected to high speed broadband. They want to be connected to the internet. The usage figures are there. And if we look at the FTTP, uh, FTTP penetration in the UK, 
Uh, it was, you know, 2012, BT announced that they would like to connect 2.5 million British properties or homes with direct access to fiber. And by 2012, a further 25% of homes would be connected. Well, by 2015, September, only 250,000 homes were connected with direct access to fiber. And when you look at the report from the EU in Ju July 2018, the EU reported that only 20, uh, sorry, 2.3% of British homes have direct access to fiber. So I think for us, it presents a huge market opportunity of essentially 97.7% you know, of the entire population um, with how, or you know, the question is how do we deliver cost-effective fiber-like connectivity? Um, you know, is fiber the answer or perhaps is it a, a wireless hybrid deployment utilizing technologies like point-to-point -point in 60, 70, and 80? And of course, now with the introduction of point to multipoint, Sequoia's new 60 gigahertz multi hall. Next slide. Next slide. So, some of you may be familiar with the Sequoia product set. Uh, a really brief uh, two second introduction on Sequoia. We established in 2008 and spent the first three years really in research and development. And what we developed was an all silicon based millimeter wave uh, radio. Uh, primarily, 100% of the, the focus was in point-to-point -point connectivity for both high capacity uh, at rooftop level and high capacity down in the street level. So uh, judging from the poll, 73% of people are deploying uh, our street level products, with perhaps the EH500 or EH600. Uh, these radios operate in the license-free V-band, typically between 57 and 64 gigahertz. Uh, one massive advantage Sicklu brings for some um, is uh, the additional of two gigahertz of spectrum between 64 and 66. Uh, this band here as well, we suffer significantly less oxygen attenuation as traditional or perhaps alternative 60 gig operators. So we're able to increase link distances by around 30%. Uh, this product here as well, uh, following the new recent Ofcom announcement that permitted the point to multipoint use, has also opened up the 64 to 66 gigahertz band as license free. So today with Sicklu, you can provide point-to-point -point connectivity in 60 gig from 57 gigahertz all the way through to 66 gigahertz without a license. Uh, Ofcom have also announced that they're going to increase this V-band spectrum to 71 gigahertz. So we'll have available to us, uh, you know, an abundance of spectrum between 57 and 71 gigahertz. Um, so Sicklu will continue to develop this street-level product in small form factor radio, including things like the inbuilt layer two switching functionality, all your carrier class features like IP67 build quality, uh, map with a manufacturer's uh, mean time between failure of more than 90 years based on current, uh, current rates. We also have uh, the high capacity point-to-point -point rooftop products. Many of you are probably familiar with this range here, primarily operating in the 1780 gigahertz E-band. Of course, this band here in the UK is lightly licensed at 50 pounds per year. Uh, we've also just introduced the, the first 10 gigabit uh, single box solution into our range. So we have uh, the P2P uh, 8010, which is a point-to-point -point, uh, ether hall radio operating with 10 gigabit full duplex. Uh, uh, so primarily you have uh, now a product from street level at 100 megabits all the way through to 10 gigabit full duplex. Uh, to complete our complete uh, network offering, well, we've introduced, of course, the street level multi-hall radio, which provides uh, aggregate speeds of up to 1.8 gigabits from a single base station and up to gigabit connectivity for the subscribers. So with this completing the portfolio, I'm going to hand over to Shimon, who will run us through the uh, details on point to multipoint, and we'll join you for the Q&A following the presentation. Thank you, Luke, uh, for this introduction, and uh, welcome everybody again. My name is uh, Shimon Hoshbaum, and I will take you through a product introduction of Multihall. So the main reason, uh, as Luke explained, uh, where why we designed uh, Multihall uh, is really to sorry is really to serve uh, the, the the fixed 5G wireless market, uh, making it possible to very easily uh, connect uh, dense housings, single family home and small multi-dwelling uh, back to the point of presence uh, of the fiber reach. Uh, so we can uh, now we've uh, taking advantage of uh, millimeter wave technology and a lot of things uh, which we are going to talk in the product. Uh, we make it possible to first of all deliver multi-gigabit uh, services uh, which is uh, going to be the norm uh, very soon uh, in dense deployment 
together with uh, very fast planning uh, cycles. We're going to show you to how uh, we support that. Uh, all this working in a plug-and-play uh, manner uh, to allow very fast uh, rollouts and, uh, and match scalability. Uh, in addition, uh, the same uh, technology can be deployed uh, in small city type of applications, mostly video surveillance, uh, but uh, any kind of sensors uh, which would be down the street and needs to be backhauled to your infrastructure. Uh, again, uh, where all the benefits and advantages of millimeter wave uh, come to play, uh, such as um, you know, immunity to interference, affordability, and survivability and hacker proof, uh, even in a case of uh, disasters. So, uh, Multiol uh, is new in the UK, but it's not a new product. Uh, we launched uh, this uh, product family uh, in other regions, as uh, Luke explained, uh, US, uh, Germany, and Russia uh, over a year ago. Uh, we have now a large number of uh, uh, successes uh, in uh, single family homes, in residences, in small city, uh, and in connectivity to small multi-dwelling units, uh, which uh, you can see here illustrated on this uh, slide. One of our uh, you know, very early customers, a uh, wireless ISP in uh, California, uh, was actually able to tweet uh, their first deployment, uh, really starting from uh, you know, nothing on the left, to a link up in less than five minutes, and uh, then going down to the customer and uh, running the speed test and uh, delivering 600 megabit. Uh, obviously, that's uh, also not only the, due to the uh, advantages that we were bringing, but also their infrastructure uh, from on the fiber uh, all the way to the internet. So, uh, how does uh, Multiol uh, look like? As I said, it is a point-to-multipoint -point, uh, technology, uh, which means that we have base units uh, which are going to be placed uh, at the optimal coverage location, uh, generally speaking, a taller structure, but it doesn't need to be. And then we have the terminal units, uh, which are placed where the services have to be delivered. It can be a single family home, it can be a multi-dwelling unit, it can be a camera and any other type of uh, sensor. So a very classical uh, point to multi-point uh, technology uh, with the base unit interfacing to the core network, uh, which can be either a, a, a real fiber connection or one of our other point-to-point -point products uh, with the ability to do uh, not only connectivity to the base unit, but also power the base unit directly with the power over Ethernet outputs, uh, which we have on all our point-to-point -point radios. Uh, we can also configure a point to a multi hole cluster in a slightly different way where uh, maybe the BU is located uh, on that location where it has visibility to most of the terminal units, but there is no fiber running there. And in that case, uh, the network connection can be affected from one of the other terminal units uh, in the cluster. And that allows more flexibility in the way the deployments are uh, designed and deployed. And in case uh, we want to go over longer distances than what a single cluster of multi hole can cover, uh, or we want to connect more than uh, what a single cluster uh, can aggregate, we can basically start daisy chaining from one terminal unit to another sector, uh, powering also the base unit again from the terminal unit, not just the connectivity. So all that is uh, realized with a single Ethernet jumper between one terminal unit and a base unit. Now, I hope uh, you can see here the illustration, but basically what is uh, really important to understand is that even though we are talking here about a point-to-multipoint technology, it is still very much a millimeter wave solution. 
which means that at the end of, at the, end of the day, when uh, the base unit has uh, scanned uh, its sector, it will uh, align uh, narrow beams toward each of the terminal units uh, in the sector and uh, thereby regaining the advantages of millimeter wave technologies, uh, which are uh, narrow beams uh, to achieve multi-gigabit uh, capacity and uh, high gain for uh, immunity from interferences. Now, this uh, scanning happens on the base unit, and it also happens on the terminal unit, uh, where it uh, brings very similar advantages in terms of uh, capacity, in terms of uh, high gain and immunity, but also in terms of self-alignment. Uh, in many cases, uh, connecting a terminal unit to the sector means uh, pointing it uh, roughly in the direction of the, ba of the base unit, uh, eyeball, precision, nothing more. And then uh, the scanning antennas inside the, the terminal unit and the base unit uh, will start doing their magic uh, and will build this uh, narrow beam for high capacity and great immunity. Uh, so uh, this means that basically we have a sector uh, which uh, can uh, today cover a 90 degrees uh, angle in the horizontal plane, uh, reach uh, all the way to 400 meters when we do not take the rain into account or the target availability. Uh, and we can today connect up to eight terminal units to a single base unit. Uh, if you want to check uh, coverage in uh, your region, uh, those who are familiar with CICLU already know our link budget calculator. Uh, LBC, which you can reach at lbc.ciclo.com, and uh, we have made uh, the necessary changes to the tool so that it can calculate also distances for the multi-hole family, and uh, once you choose uh, the location of your deployment and uh, the target availability that you would like, uh, the budget calculator will uh, provide you great uh, uh, prediction uh, of the kind of performance that you can achieve uh, within the target availability. So I see that we have some questions coming. Uh, uh, we plan to answer, as Luke said, uh, toward the, the end. Uh, some of the questions uh, may be answered as we go along uh, this discussion. Uh, so. Um, uh, the multi hole units uh, all look very much uh, the same. Uh, they come, you know, about uh, seven inches, seven inches uh, high, five inches wide, uh, and uh, even though they are uh, compact, they are still a, a very complete solution uh, in terms of uh, they come uh, together with. Uh, uh, the accessory that we see here on the left, which allows mounting uh, directly on a pole or on a wall. Uh, the units have also the fittings uh, to allow some, uh, the traditional uh, EHMK-ESM of CICLU, which is a different uh, mounting kit not included in the box, which allows vertical adjustment of the uh, units uh, all the way up to plus minus 60 degrees. Inside any of the multi-hole units, you will find the base unit or the terminal unit. You will find this mounting kit with its two metal bands. There is also an AC PoE injector, which allows PoE out for those units which are capable of power Ethernet, and a grounding cable, so it's really a complete solution in the box. Even though we provide an AC PoE injector, if you would like to power the units uh, with a, a switch, for example, uh, the unit is completely uh, PoE compliant so that it can be powered from any standard uh, PoE switch that you may have in your network. We have a number of uh, unit types uh, today in the family. Uh, we have uh, the B100 uh, base unit, uh, which comes, uh, here, as you see on the left, uh, with two gigabit Ethernet port and one SFP. Uh, the SFP allows a connection to multi-mode or single mode at one gigabit, uh, depending on the fiber uh, type that you have running up to the unit. Uh, the SFPs are available in our price list as well. 
On uh, the right, you can see the two types uh, of terminal units uh, that we have, the T200 family. Uh, one comes with a single uh, RJ45, uh, which is good for uh, connectivity, for power. Uh, the other unit comes with three RJ45. Uh, again, the first port is for uh, both Ethernet and PoE in. Uh, the next two ports, middle one and the right one are also gigabit capable uh, as well as power ethernet out so for example uh, it is possible uh, to power uh, as i said earlier uh, one base unit which uh, needs only 13 watts uh, with any of the two ports that you see on the terminal unit on the right or you can power a uh, video surveillance cameras or uh, Wi-Fi access points and other type of device that you would like to have uh, backhauled by multi-gigabit uh, multi capabilities. In terms of uh, performance and uh, uh, what we have, the, the base units on the terminal units uh, uh, ship, uh, as you can see here on the table, base unit with 500 megabit out of the factory and can be uh, capacity upgraded to 1800 megabit uh, with a software license. The terminal unit uh, ship at uh, 100 meg out of the factory and uh, can be upgraded to uh, 1 gig basically again with a different software license. So that allows the, the organization to choose between uh, what they need in terms of uh, capacity uh, which can be different for a small city rollout or for a, an early uh, fiber to the home rollout, as opposed to maybe a more advanced uh, deployment. And you can optimize basically the capacity uh, and the type of units uh, as you need. Uh, as I said earlier, the, all the units uh, are power over Ethernet in capable on ETH1, uh, but they can also power out and the PoE injector, which is supplied with the units, is sized in order to uh, support the power of uh, Ethernet out as well. Um, <clears throat> so how is uh, all this uh, bandwidth allocated? Uh, those uh, who are familiar with our point-to-point uh, -point products uh, like the 500 or the 600 uh, Etherol, uh, where we have to nail down the capacity in one direction or the other, uh, here we are moving really to a different world where the capacity is uh, allocated dynamically uh, between the upstream and the downstream and obviously between the different units in the sector in response to the demand of the different applications. Uh, all that, of course, also taking into account uh, any kind of quality of service. Uh, so the units uh, have a built-in internet switch, which is uh, QoS capable and uh, we'll know how to prioritize uh, uh, different classes of service looking at, for example, the PCP bits in the VLANs. Now, the, uh, these, uh, the multiple family comes uh, with a number of features uh, which are really uh, lessons learned from what we've done uh, in, the, in the other regions so far, uh, make, making it possible basically for organizations to roll out uh, large deployments uh, very quickly and uh, as effortlessly as possible. Uh, so the, the first uh, aspect which is interesting is uh, the auto-provisioning uh, and you can imagine, uh, for example, what we do there is uh, we assign a functional name to every terminal unit uh, in the network uh, the functional name can be, for example, a corner of uh, A and First Street, you know, if we are talking about maybe a, a smart city type rollout, or it can be uh, the service ID if we think about a fiber to the home type deployment. And uh, basically, this uh, identifier uh, identifies the terminal unit uh, in a unique way. A profile corresponding to this identifier uh, is loaded in the base unit as soon as uh, the service is ordered to that location uh, and when the terminal unit uh, connects phys you know, over the air to the base unit, uh, its profile will be synced from the BU to the TU automatically upon connection, uh, which means that uh, the technician uh, doing the install uh, need very little training 
and will spend very little time uh, completing the installation. Uh, all what we need to do, as I said earlier, is basically point the terminal unit uh, more or less in the direction of the base unit, uh, as long as it is uh, somewhere in a plus minus 45 degrees angle, uh, the antennas will do their magic, uh, wait for the, then plug the power into the unit, uh, look at the power LED, look at uh, the RF LED, uh, confirming that the connection is established and then walk away to the next installation. All that uh, happens as I showed you on a very early slide in less than five minutes. Uh, so for this to happen uh, on the terminal unit side, we have two ways to do it. Uh, the technician can just uh, program uh, this assigned name uh, into the terminal unit, uh, which is very convenient if uh, you know, they come, we need to come back uh, two years later because the terminal unit failed. They can just plug again the same logical name into the new terminal unit uh, without having to call on the NOC to register a new unit into the network. Uh, or another model for organizations which have uh, more advanced back office systems is to scan the serial number of uh, the unit uh, and then uh, send it over to uh, the network operating center, which can uh, make just one change in the base unit uh, to uh, basically change the assigned name to the serial number of the new unit. And in that case, the technician doesn't even need to go into the graphical interface of the terminal unit. Uh, no, other features that we have available are port and TU isolation, uh, which, uh, for example, can allow a very quick entry into the multifamily market small MDUs, as they may be called uh, in the UK. So imagine that you take one of our terminal units uh, with three ports, uh, you run a, a wire basically uh, to the first three units uh, in uh, the location, um, and uh, they can be served uh, directly from that unit, no additional investment. Uh, however, uh, that could be a kind of a security risk because now these uh, no, two units uh, on the same in the same building could be talking to each other. A cl no, classical uh, location uh, for this is uh, to maybe turn VLANs. But now the VLANs needs to be provisioned uh, all you know, correctly, both on uh, this uh, residential gateway and on the terminal unit and maybe in other places in the network, uh, which uh, means that there is uh, room for error, if not additional labor. Uh, just a click on, a, on the check mark here on the terminal unit and uh, the uh, port isolation is turned on. A similar setting is available on the BU. Uh, to isolate between terminal units on the same sector. Uh, all this, again, to try and make it very simple uh, to uh, roll out a, a large number of uh, units uh, with uh, you know, very little training on the techs in the street and very little time spent uh, doing these connections. Uh, another feature that we have uh, at your disposal is uh, to lock or unlock uh, the ports of a terminal unit uh, based on authentication of uh, the connected device. Uh, imagine now that uh, you might have a great number of these terminal units all across town, either on the side of a home or on a pole, and uh, now anybody coming up to these ports can basically access your network. Uh, simplest way to avoid uh, any risk is to lock the port unless uh, a recognized and authenticated device is plugged into any of the ports. Uh, so we rely on a very standard mechanism to implement that level of security with uh, IEEE 802.1x, where multi all TUs or BUs uh, function as authenticator. Uh, they just need to be programmed with the location of the authentication server in your network, uh, the ports will remain lock, uh, locked, Sorry, and whenever a device is connected, it will be challenged, uh, the response will be sent to the authentication server, and if we get a green light from there, uh, we will open the port uh, for any kind of uh, service, uh, be it again a camera, a home gateway, or anything similar. 
And uh, last but not least, uh, some cute uh, features as well. Uh, you know, as we start bringing down radios uh, to the street level, uh, the LEDs, uh, which are on the side of the multi base unit or terminal units, are visible from distance. Uh, you know, citizens can be concerned by blinking lights, uh, uh, which show up all of a sudden in the neighborhood uh, during the night. Uh, they are on by default, but uh, they can be turned off um, you know, with a configuration in the unit uh, so that uh, the user can maybe uh, reset the unit uh, when they come to do some kind of uh, local maintenance, observe uh, the LEDs and what is the status of the unit, and a few minutes later the LEDs will turn off, again making sure that uh, no concerned citizen um, you know, will call uh, the, you know, the force and complain about uh, uh, suspicious uh, lights in the sky. So you know, that's, uh, I think, uh, some of the features uh, which we have built into the system, uh, in addition to the performance and uh, other information that we have shared. Now, uh, you, know, you might say, well, designing point to point uh, with SQL, we understood. We have done that for a number of years. It was easy. Uh, now we are going to be designing point to multi point network. It's really a very different uh, uh, game. And we want to do large uh, deployments. It's even more complicated. Uh, so, uh, in addition, uh, you know, what we have also done, uh, we have brought a, a wireless network design engine. Uh, which is available as a SaaS application. So it means that uh, there is nothing to install. Uh, you can just uh, point your browser to uh, the URL which uh, we can, can give you, uh, plug in your username and password, uh, therefore you have, and then you have access to the tool. It's always up to date. Uh, because it is uh, in the cloud, it means that your data is always backed up and available, um, but it is still your data and you can export it in many different ways, uh, such as uh, Excel or KML file, uh, so that you could continue to use your data after you have done the design in many different ways uh, which suit your organization. So uh, that's the platform side. Uh, what can it do in terms of uh, solution? Uh, it will, first of all, uh, support line of sight validation manually for now. Uh, it will do a complete design of the topology, uh, whether you have uh, 50 or 500 nodes to connect, uh, all done uh, by one click, basically, on the screen. And uh, the tool uh, will offer about 20 options to you, which are going to be ranked for performance or price, and you can decide, uh, you know, get if the level of performance is adequate or not, or go for maybe something which is a little more expensive in terms of equipment, but better performance. Uh, you can basically optimize uh, the design to suit the goals of your organization. Uh, the tool will, so, will also do a complete RF planning and interference validation, meaning it will assign uh, channels and frequencies to point-to-point -point and point -to multi point radios, validate interference to be sure that uh, all that has been done according to uh, proper uh, designs. Uh, if you are happy with uh, all this, uh, you can then move on to the next uh, stage and uh, review the bill of material, make any adjustments uh, which would be necessary, uh, even though the tool is obviously aware of uh, whether mounting kits and POEs and SFPs are uh, necessary or recommended. Uh, all the Configuration rules uh, are baked into the platform and uh, will be updated as we add uh, uh, new accessories or new radios. Um, once uh, you have reviewed the material, you can export it to an Excel file. Uh, it's priced automatically uh, with your, uh, I would say, your usual discount level uh, from Cyclo or from your distributors. You can then check with your distributor that uh, the prices are right, that the parts are available, that they are on inventory, and what will be the de delivery time. And if all checks, uh, place an order. Uh, and last but not least, uh, the tool will also uh, basically 
uh, provide configuration files for all of the six radios, point to point or point to multi point, so that once you move from uh, the ordering to the deployment and you may be staging your radios or going directly to the, to the field with your radios, either way, you have a configuration file for each radio to make sure that it will be configured with uh, the correct uh, channel, uh, channel bandwidth, uh, IP address for management, uh, VLAN for management, uh, SNMP uh, traps, etc. All the things which uh, basically bring the network up and make it possible to uh, validate uh, the installation, commission the installation, and then move back to the network operating center and manage uh, the network uh, as a whole. Uh, from remote. So, uh, you know, and to illustrate uh, all this, uh, you he have here a, a view of uh, Windy in operation, where a small network of uh, 20 nodes is configure, configured here uh, on the screen. Okay, so I hope uh, you have a good, uh, good idea by now of what uh, multi-hall uh, can do uh, for your organization and what are the advantages in terms of uh, capacity, speed of deployment, ease of deployment, and flexibility. And I'll turn back uh, the presentation to look for a little bit. Thank you, Shimon. Um, we wanted to share with you an evaluation partner offer. Um, this is strictly limited to the first 20 partners we're working with here in the UK. And the idea really is to get some feedback from real world deployments on products, as Shimon mentioned, that have been deployed so far in the US, Russia, and Germany. And the evaluation offer consists of a bundle, which is inclusive of one uh, base station unit. So this is the, the B100 CCS unit that Shimon showed us. Uh, three terminal units with the inbuilt layer two switch and three gigabit ethernet ports, including two PoE out supported ports. It'll include one 500 meg to two gigabit upgrade. This is the upgrade on the base station to take it to the full capacity. And we'll also include three gigabit upgrades for the terminal units from 100 meg. Uh, the mounting brackets and PoE injectors are also included in the bundle. So it's everything you need to start your first trial or sample deployment. Uh, there is a catch. We are asking just for a few words of feedback after the trial. Um, so perhaps just asking you some questions about the application it served, you know, what sort of capacities were achieved. Um, you know, what type of application do you foresee in the future? You know, anything that you guys can contribute that we might be able to use at a later date across some of the marketing or in these sort of forums as we roll the product out globally. Now, there is a supported buy price of this, so a subsidized buy price supported by Cyclu, and the buy price for the, the entire bundle uh, is £1,785. Um, as I said, it's limited to 20 customers. We've got 20 of these bundles to, to support. Uh, inclusive of all the products you see there, everything you need to establish, uh, you know, three gigabit enabled customers from a two gigabit enabled base station. Um, so we are we are looking at, you know, taking on those customers, uh, first 20 to, to do so, send us an order directly, we'll fulfill it through a distributor. Um, those guys will provide obviously the credit, the shipping and everything like that. And um, yeah, we can take it from there. So I think we uh, probably moved to some questions. We've got a few questions that have sort of fired in. So um, we can start working through those. Of course, if there is any questions you guys have, feel free to type them into the box. Um, we'll address the sort of four or five that are here already. Um, so from Shimon, uh, okay, to Shimon, I should say, uh, what kind of information is captured within the logs and is it SNMP manageable? Uh, thank you, Luke. So, uh, yes, the units are SNMP manageable. Uh, we, are, we are coming from Ciclu and uh, you know, we, have, uh, we have built basically carrier facilities in all our radios so far in the ether role family and in the multiple family as well. Uh, the units are SNMP manageable. There are logs uh, which are going to uh, inform also about uh, to use uh, connecting, disconnecting, uh, changing in modulation levels, uh, maybe uh, you know, all what you would normally expect to see uh, from a carry grade uh, equipment. Uh, Ethernet port coming up and down. Uh, and you know, I think that's uh, all what you would normally need to see 802.1x uh, uh, you know, challenges and uh, failures or successes. 
uh, all the uh, basically all anything which is going to happen in terms of connectivity within the cluster and at the ports of the cluster uh, is going to appear in the logs of the unit uh, and you also have uh, ability to monitor uh, real time uh, the units uh, with SNMP or to change configuration uh, with SNMP as well. Uh, the, sorry, I was going to say that uh, on our, on our uh, partners portal website, uh, you can uh, go to the software download area. Uh, there are obviously uh, the latest uh, release note, the latest software version, as well as the MIP file, uh, all uh, are located in the same uh, directory. So further to that question, uh, is the authentication server um, Radius or CHAP? The authentication server is uh, neither. It is uh, 802.1x uh, capable. So I think it's a derivative of Radius, uh, but uh, I will clarify that. Uh, you know, any answer, that, any questions, sorry, that uh, we cannot answer online, uh, or the ones that we do answer, uh, we will provide uh, a written Q&A within a few days together with a recording of this webinar uh, and uh, th that question will be clarified. Fantastic. Uh, just to let you know, the first four bundles have been reserved, which is great news. Uh, so how does multi-hall handle interference from other providers using the same equipment or competitive 60 gigahertz gear? Okay, very good uh, question. Uh, so I, I, no, I can't really speak about uh, what uh, the competitive gear is, uh, when it will come to the market, will or will not do, but I can certainly speak about what uh, multi hall does. Uh, and multi hall is essentially, uh, even though it is a point to multi point unit, it is still a millimeter wave technology. Uh, so uh, the, the antenna or the antenna array, uh, which is uh, inside the, the units, uh, both on the base unit and on the terminal unit, uh, have the ability to scan a wide sector of 90 degrees, but they will also identify uh, the, you know, from the BU where are the TUs uh, in that uh, coverage. Uh, the TU will identify where the BU is, again, in its uh, angle of view, and once uh, this identification, once these uh, negotiations basically are complete, uh, all the two units, or the two types of units, sorry, uh, will narrow their beams uh, back to what is uh, normally achieved uh, you know, within millimeter waves, so just a few degrees, and therefore uh, will basically gain immunity from any kind of interference uh, in the network or in the vicinity, sorry, of the, of the area. Okay, uh, we'll go to, this is uh, the final question so far. So guys, if there is any questions that you do want answered, please don't be shy, pop them in the, the Q&A. As Shimon mentioned, if we can't address them now, we'll come back with a written Q&A. Uh, this here relates to encryption. Does it support encryption? Does multi hole support encryption? Uh, yes, uh, multi hole uh, support encryption. Uh, it is AES-128. Uh, always on, it's you no know, direct function of uh, uh, the SSID and the password that you have to plug in the term, in the base unit and in the terminal unit, uh, and then the unit uh, know how to build their keys uh, for the negotiation and encryption, uh, basically autonomously from there. Okay, um, there's just one more question that came in. Uh, what is the maximum number of terminal units supported by the base station? So the, the base station can support uh, eight terminal units and the bandwidth is uh, shared autonomously between the different units. There are some rate limiters uh, which can be affected in case somebody wants uh, some more granular control over where and how the bandwidth is allocated between the different units. Perfect. Uh, I believe that may be the questions addressed. Uh, of course, um, feel free to contact Shimon directly or myself directly should uh, any questions arise following uh, the conclusion of the webinar. We'd like to thank you for your participation and hope to work with you on um, 
on some interesting examples. Uh, there's one final question here that's just come in. Uh, over a one gig connection from a TU to a BU, what is the typical uh, throughput? So the, the throughput will be again one gigabit. Uh, the terminal unit uh, can basically, uh, uh, the, the terminal unit has a capacity of one gigabit and uh, if the only device which is connected to that terminal unit is again a base unit, uh, then the base unit will have uh, access to the full one gigabit capacity from that terminal unit. Okay, perfect. Uh, I believe that's it. Uh, I'll come back to those individually in terms of the reservations for the bundles, so we'll get everything processed from there. Should you have any additional questions, contact Shimon or myself directly, and we look forward to working with you soon. Thanks again.